Should we intro what we're up to? Actually, first, to introduce yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Tyler. A couple years ago, you came out, uh, linked up. I think I actually hadn't really known who you were, and a bunch of people were messaging me saying, hey, Chris Miller's in Yosemite. Do something with him. And then I think I looked up your name on Instagram, and you had sent me a message. Yeah. Your boy's a huge YouTube star. I don't have time for messages. That's it. Stay out of the DMs. <laughs> uh, and then we went and rode, and I just remember at the time, I was coming off a big bill. I was... Oh, you were complaining. I was The not, whole time. Jeez. I was not fit. 400 watts for just about five minutes. So I still think about this at least every couple months, is that I was like, hey, I'm going to lead you out for a KOM. Oh, that's right. And my chain was really dry at the time, but anyways... I'm full gas. And I remember you go, are we on the segment yet? Are we, are we going? And I'm like, dude, I'm sprinting. <laughs> and you didn't even know we had started. I was, now well, you're on an old bike. Morning. I'm on a futuristic speed machine. I'm fit. I'm good. No excuses. And I love the fact that we're leaning into the modern day vegan cyclist, i.e. we drove basically out to Yosemite and flapped about out there and it was nice, it was fun. But no, no, you don't do bike rides like that with him anymore. It's uh, 160 k's. What's that in miles? We're like 100, 100 miles? 104 miles. 4,000 meters of climbing. 11,000 feet of climbing. Um, and uh, yeah, door to door. From my door to Yosemite to back. And uh, it's a badass ride. Oh, it's a Thursday, so traffic isn't bad. Hey guys, welcome. Howdy. Luke Bass Lake? Yep. Okay, so to become a local in Bass Lake, what place do you have to eat at? The pint? On, or the That's fork. The best. Who good was that guy? Okay, so this is the gate, south yep. gate. Okay. If you go right, you go up to the giant sequoias. Okay. Uh, Mariposa Grove. Yep. Beautiful. They do not allow you to ride up there, though. Huh. Um, so we've got a little descent. Then we've got about an hour climb. Then another descent. And then we're in the valley. wasn't going last time just because it was later in the year but... you want to go somewhere secret where there's no people yeah that sounds good Cool tunnel though, though. It is. It's very unbound. In this tunnel, there's air vents, and we're in one of them. Uh, and so it used to be that you could come all the way out here and just chill, but there's just a cliff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so you'd think that a national park would have more security. Uh, they did finally install that security, but it's really crazy to just come through the mountain like this. It's pretty wild, actually. <laughs> Uh, like how cold it is yeah. in there and how dark it is. It's, but it's just places in Yosemite without tourists that that's where you want to go mm. because yeah, I mean, tunnel view, like that's cool. But man, when there's 50 people Crawling all around. trying to get a picture, you kind of, kind of takes away from this.
actually really dangerous riding around here because you're looking up the whole time. So you were telling me a little story about the name Yosemite. Yos the PG version is that the word Yosemite uh, means bear in Native America. Grizzly bear. And how cool is that? Because there were grizzly bears here at one point. But the reality is that there was a tribe that lived here for around 8,000 years that called themselves the Anawakas. Uh, Awani, which meant gaping mouth, and all the other tribes around the area called them the Yosemites, which means those who kill. So the tribe that lived here on Wakas, and I'm butchering these names, but you get the point. They were a, uh, a, a tribe of misfits. They didn't really belong anywhere. They all came from surrounding tribes here, and they were vicious, and they protected this land. So everyone called them the ones that kill. That word was roughly Yosemite. How that word got associated with the park is maybe a story that you need to look up because I don't want to get Chris canceled, but <laughs> it's wild. It's wild, the history of this valley. So just quickly, uh, the guys at the shop managed to lend me a different bike again. And this one is a Cannondale from uh, 2012 this time. So. We're almost in the same decade at this point, but it's been kind of cool actually just trialing these old sort of rigs because I wasn't actually, I wasn't buying bikes at this level when they were new. Do you know what I mean? Like in 2012, I was getting like an entry level bike. So it's kind of cool to now be getting like a high end bike from that vintage. I don't think we could have two more diametrically opposed rigs out here. Look at this aero extravaganza. Well, so every shape, every tube. But here's the thing about why this bike is special. It's just an aero road, okay? But my drivetrain, I've never seen anyone else do what I do, which is I run a one by oval ring setup and the rotor rear cassette, this is an 1146. On my road bike, I run on 1152. And so even though this is an aero bike and it's fast and I can race crits on it, because I have the oval ring 5246, mm. I mean, I can climb just as well on it. Yeah. And then I don't have to worry about a front derailleur or anything. It's the best setup possible. You could win any race in the US, what would it be? Unbound, for sure, 100%. And that's becoming more and more prestigious. Yeah. To the point where I don't think it's gonna be possible for anyone who's not world tour level. Look, and some people really don't like gravel. They think it's super dumb. You get 50th at unbound, you're stumped. Yeah. You've had one hell of a day. Yeah. You get 50th in a road race, you might as well delete your Strava. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? It's pointless. You drove how far? So what's your aim, your goal this year riding wise? Do you have one? The tickle and the dickle yeah. is the uh, ultra distance national championship. Sick. Cool. That's in September, uh, 508 miles, all road. 30,000 feet of climbing, which is the flattest course they offer. Um, and look, to have stars and bars, stars and bars, baby. That is such an achievement that I will never be able to do in a straight up crit or road race. But the, the fact that I have the ability to get a national championship, a recognized national championship that's the dream yeah and it's one of the best jerseys in the yeah.
Some things don't change all over the world. A slob stop. This is a slob stop. What are you running? Glass. Dude, glass bottles glass make bottles. everything taste so much better. I'm instantly in jealous, actually. I didn't even see that. But I'm stoked because I got my first Dr. Pepper of my trip to the US again. Well, sir, thank you for that. Thank you, man. That was awesome. But here's the major dilemma. We're at 96.4. And that bothers me. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. Are you okay that think been an extra couple miles to the pines? I think it'd be rude not to, now that I know the pines is the uh, dining place of choice. All right, while we uh, tap out these last few Ks, thanks for taking me out, man. Dude, it was awesome. We might, we might. We might see him again, we'll see. Might have overstayed my welcome. All right. Never. With your uh, Aussie accent, I'd love to <laughs> hear more of it. <laughs> One hundred. <laughs>